Hello and welcome to this video on parallel RL and RC circuits. In this video we're going to look at how different components behave when we connect them together in parallel. In this case in front of us we're seeing a resistor in parallel with an inductor both connected to an AC power supply and we're also going to look at a similar example later on where a resistor is connected in parallel with a capacitor, hence parallel RC circuits as well. So one of the first things we'll notice when we have a parallel circuit like this is now we draw two currents uh, through these two different components. We have a current IR through the, uh, through the resistor and we also have a current IL flowing through the inductor and together they are going to combine to form IS our supply current and so in this video what we're going to do to start with is calculate some of these different parameters so first off let's look at the inductor here because we're told that it's a 100 microhenry inductor but we first of all need to calculate the reactance of that inductor and we calculate reactance using the formula XL equals 2 pi FL. So by putting some values into that equation 2 pi multiplied by the frequency well we're told in the question again that our frequency is 1 kilohertz uh, so 1000 hertz multiplied by L the inductance and in our case it's 100 microhenry, so that's 100 times 10 to the minus 6. Once I've calculated that now, uh, I come to an answer of 0.63 ohms. So going back to our currents here, we now know that we have a supply voltage of 10 volts supplying um, both of these components in parallel and we can now just use Ohm's law because we know that um, current is voltage divided by resistance so in this case IR would simply be a case of saying voltage divided by resistance which is 10 volts divided by 1.5 ohms and that gives me a current of 6.67 amps. With IL the idea is very much the same except rather than voltage divided by resistance we don't have a resistance here we have a reactance and so we'll say that IL is voltage divided by XL. So in our case here it will be 10 divided by 0.63 and that gives us 15.87 amps. Now the temptation here is to say well we know that IR is 6.67 amps flowing through the resistor and we know that IL is 15.87 amps flowing through the inductor and so IS must simply be 6.67 plus 15.87 now there's a reason why this isn't correct and we're going to look at the correct way of working out the supply current next okay so just as a reminder I've noted IL and IR there on our diagram IL 15.87 amps and IR 6.67 amps and what we said was we can't simply add these together to get the supply current. It would be nice if we could, but it's slightly more complicated than that. The reason for this goes right back to when we first started to look at inductors and capacitors. And one of the things we said was that in an inductor, current lags the voltage by 90 degrees. And in a capacitor, current leads the voltage by 90 degrees. Well, what does that mean in terms of this circuit that we have in front of us? It means that the currents that we see 
in front of us, I, R, and I, L, are not in phase. And they're in fact 90 degrees apart because the current that goes through the inductor has a 90 degree phase shift, whereas the current that goes through the resistor doesn't. Let's try and represent that a little bit better with a diagram here. So what I'm going to do is draw a phasor diagram which shows my current IR pointing to the right first of all. And we said that in a phasor diagram pointing to the right is kind of like the default position. Um, if, you, if we haven't encountered any sort of phase shift normally our vectors, are, uh, the arrows will point to the right. Anything that's leading will tilt upwards um, in this sort of direction and anything that's lagging will tilt downwards in this sort of direction and we know by definition any current that goes through an inductor lags by 90 degrees so it tilts downwards on our diagram by 90 degrees so I'm going to draw IL and IL is a little bit bigger than I R. So I'm going to draw it as a slightly longer arrow. This isn't perfectly to scale, but there we are. So we have our two currents here, IL and IR. I'll just mark on some values there. IR was 6.67 amps and IL was 15.87 amps. And so the reason that we can't just add these two together to get the supply current is because we're going to use Pythagoras' theorem to get the total current. If you look at the phasor diagram there, you might get the idea that the supply current is going to point something like in this direction. It's going to be the combination of the two parallel currents. So my diagram there isn't perfect, but hopefully you can see that by combining these two currents using Pythagoras' theorem, thinking of this as a, a right angle triangle of sorts, we're going to say that our resulting current, the supply current, is going to be the hypotenuse of our triangle. And you can see there, according to our phasor diagram, that that current is going to be slightly longer in length, so slightly greater value than either of the two currents. It's also lagging because it's tilting downwards and it's lagging by an angle that's somewhere between 0 and 90. We're going to calculate that angle as well in just a second. But first of all, back to our Pythagoras' theorem uh, idea because we're saying here that IS is our sort of hypotenuse, uh, our resultant of this phasor diagram here. And the way we're going to do that is, like I say, use Pythagoras' theorem there. And so we can say that IS squared is equal to IR squared plus IL squared. And just rearranging that slightly, we'll say that IS is the square root of IR squared plus IL squared. And we can put some values in there. We can see that that's the square root of 6.67 squared was IR plus 15.87 squared for our IL. And plugging all that into a calculator gives me a result of 17.21 amps. So looking back to the scale of our diagram, and this was only a, an approximate rough sort of scale when I sketched it here, but we can see that that value kind of makes sense in terms of the scaling of our diagram. We'd expect that line to be a little bit longer than the um, IL arrow there, and so we're getting a, a, a value that reflects that. The last thing that I mentioned before was calculating the phase angle of our new current. We have an angle there that's, like I say, somewhere between 0 and 90 degrees. And so going back to our diagram here, thinking of this as a, as a triangle of sorts, our value um, for IL, this arrow pointing downwards here, is the same length as 
this side here on our sort of imaginary triangle. And this would be the opposite uh, side to our marked angle. So if we're using some basic trigonometry here, we can think of this side being adjacent to the marked angle, the opposite of the marked angle, and the hypotenuse of the marked angle. And so I can use a, a basic trigonometric identity here. I can say that um, theta is equal to tan to the minus one of the opposite over the adjacent. And in that case, the opposite is IL. And that's running down that side. And the adjacent is IR running along the top there. So tan to the minus one, IL over IR is actually going to give me um, a phase angle for that particular um, supply current. And plugging that into a calculator, I come up with an angle of 67.2 degrees. So again, I know that my sketch here was just a rough sketch, but that, that angle um, does seem to correspond with what we would expect to get somewhere between um, zero and 90 degrees and something above 45 degrees. So 67.2 degrees sounds about right there. One thing I would say as well is because this is a, a lagging phase angle tilting downwards, very often you might see that expressed as minus 67.2. Um, so I've just snuck a minus in there and that just tells us that our, that our current is, is lagging rather than leading. So minus 67.2 for the marked angle there, tilting downwards. Just a brief mention here about parallel RC circuits. So you'll notice that my little sketch here is almost identical to our first circuit, but rather than an inductor, we've now got a capacitor. Well, I'm not gonna do another full worked example here, but just to say that the method is almost exactly the same. We'd have a current here, IR, we'd have a current here, IC, going through the capacitor, and they would similarly combine to form a supply current. The only difference being, first of all, XC is calculated by using the formula one over two pi FC. But the most important difference is that once we've used um, the, the capacitive reactants XC to work out the current going through the capacitor. The current going through the capacitor leads the voltage by 90 degrees. And so when we draw our phaser diagram for this particular circuit, IR would point to the right, uh, as it did before. IC would point upwards by 90 degrees and our resultant, our supply, would point off in this sort of direction, tilting upwards from the horizontal. So we'd have a leading phase angle in that case. So I hope this video has been useful in explaining how resistors, inductors, and capacitors behave when they're combined together in parallel. In this video, we've only looked at two uh, components in parallel, either resistor and inductor or resistor and capacitor. In the next video, we're going to be looking at how all three components behave when they're combined in parallel.